डे स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर अनिल प्रसाद टाटा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ सोशल साइंसेस हैदराबाद वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट मिलेनियम डेवलपमेंट गोल्स द मिलेनियम डेवलपमेंट गोल्स आर नॉट द फर्स्ट टाइम दैट ग्लोबल प्रॉमिसेस हैव बीन मेड अबाउट इराडिकेटिंग और रैपिडली रिड्यूसिंग ह्यूमन डिप्रिवेशन antecedents can be found stretching back to president franklin d roosevelt's four freedom speech of january 1941 and to the declaration of human rights of 1948 and its stipulation that everyone has the right to a standard of living adequate for the health and well-being of himself and of his family including food clothing housing and medical care as per un declaration of human rights article 25 the 1960s were declared unanimously in the general assembly to be the first united nations development decade sparking of a rash of target setting but enthusiasm to set targets ran ahead of commitment to action processes for monitoring targets and mechanisms for producing plans of action were not created and the results often fell for short of the rhetoric a common pattern of behavior can be observed at many summits education food small islands drugs the 1980s saw the stalling of global symmetry and goal setting and a dramatic change in the global intellectual environment the un's influence waned while that of the imf and world bank increased as the as they imposed structural adjustment policies and the increasing numbers of poor countries coming to them for loans the bank and fund imposed a recipe of liberalization privatization and reduced government to get the prices right leading to what many have seen as developments last decade towards the end of the 1980s more and more evidence began to emerge that structural adjustment and the associated conditionalities were not delivering on the promise of growth and prosperity and that the physical restraint they call for were damaging education health and other essential services in 2000 led by the united nations world leaders came together to set ambitious targets for reducing poverty and improving social and economic conditions around the globe by 2015 the millennium development goals are a commitment to establish peace and a healthy global economy by focusing on major issues such as children's health empowerment of women and girls education sustainability disease and more progress toward achieving the eight mdgs has been impressive despite the many challenges posed by conflict climate change and financial calamities the millennium development goals harness the power of numbers to provide a framework for a evidence based policy making and the power of simple ideas 
to mobilize public opinion. This is supported by a global millennium campaign. The MDGs provide global benchmarks for accountability and facilitate cross-country comparisons of human progress. Some have claimed the Millennium Development Goals have improved data collection, statistical methods and monitoring of important attributes of human well-being beyond crude surrogates such as per, per capita grass domestic product. The immediate origins of the general Millennium Development Goal project and most of the MDGs can be found in two publications of the late 1990s and neither of these publications mention MDG 8 on global partnership for development. Immediately preceding the Millennium De Declaration, the report A Better World for All Progress Towards the International Development Goals was published in 2000 by the OECD. United Nations, IMF and World Bank. It discusses seven goals that would go on to be six of the MDGs. One of the two MDGs that it fails to mention is Millennium Development Goal 8. Seven prior to the, the OECD DSC issued its report shaping the 21st century. The contribution of uh, development cooperation. This report contained references to the same six of the current MDGs and it also omits MDG 8. Donors realize the need to build strategic partnerships that ca capitalize on each partner's intrinsic strengths select shared goals and objectives and build on existing achievements working in partnership with the developing countries. The high income countries need to supply more aid. They also need to provide more and faster debt relief. They need to offer easier access to their markets including duty free and quota free access for poor countries and they need to finance programs of benefit to many countries such as research on vaccines for tropical diseases. These are the essential ingredients for promoting growth and reducing poverty in the poorest and least developed countries. The choice of uh, indicators for targets in MDG 8 was ostensibly justified by the UN on the basis of the same criteria as those for the other MDGs. According to this source, five main criteria guided the selection of indicators namely that they should provide relevant and robust measures of uh, progress towards the targets of the Millennium Development Goals. Be clear and straightforward to interpret, interpret and provide a basis for international comparison. Be broadly consistent with other global lists and avoid imposing an unnecessary burden. On country teams, governments and other partners be based to the greatest extent possible on international standards, recommendations and best practices. Be constructed from well established data sources, be quantifiable and be consistent to enable measurement over time. This is the area where the most noticeable impacts of Millennium Development Goals target setting took place. Aid had been consistently 
waning in the 1990s since 2000 this trend was reverted and total oda from dse countries in absolute terms began to rise the trend came to a halt last year when for the first time since 1997 aid dropped moreover because this trend is the result of physical constraints related to the repercussions of the global financial crisis that continues to unfold it is likely the start of another falling trend many countries have made significant progress towards achieving the millennium development goals in 1990 the baseline year for measuring millennium development goal progress almost half of the developing world lived on less than 1.25 dollar a day measured in 2005 prices the world bank poverty line used during the millennium development goal period according to new estimates from the world bank today less than 10% of the world's population live on less than the equivalent 1.9 per 9 dollar per day measured in 2010 furthermore according to the un millennium development goals report 2015 the likelihood of a child dying before age 5 has been nearly halved and the global maternal mortality rate ratio dropped by 45% since 1990 nearly 3.3 million deaths from malaria have been averted and new hiv infections have decreased by 1.4 million cases the millennium development goals played an important role in focusing the world's attention on reducing extreme poverty yet progress has been incomplete as of 2011 the percent of people in extreme poverty living on less than 1.9 dollar a day in sub saharan africa was 44.3% and in south asia was 22.3% in particular least developed countries landlocked developing countries and small island developing states remain behind as they face structural barriers to development in many societies the most vulnerable populations have middle little progress mass migration often caused by violence and conflict has led to massive displacement instability and large populations living in dangerously overcrowded refugee camps and informal settlements gender inequality remains widespread as many young girls are deprived of education and forced into early marriages under the millennium development goals the world has made tremendous progress in reducing child mortality but 6 million children still die each year from preventable causes maternal mortality rates have come down in most countries but not sufficiently to meet the mdg at the beginning of the new millennium world leaders gathered at the united nations to shape a broad vision to fight poverty in its many dimensions that vision which was translated into 8 millennium development goals has remained the overarching development framework for the world for the past 15 years thanks to concentrated global regional national and local efforts the mdgs have saved the lives of millions and improved conditions for many more 
the data and analysis presented in this report prove that with targeted interventions, sound strategies, adequate resources and political will, even the poorest countries can make dramatic and unprecedented progress. The, the report also acknowledges uneven achievements and shortfalls in many areas. The work is not complete and it must continue in the new development era. Here we will look at 8 million millennium development goals briefly. Goal 1 Eradicate extreme poverty and hunger. Goal 2 Achieve universal primary education. Goal 3 Promote gender equity and empower women. Goal 4 Reduce child mortality. Goal 5 Improve maternal health. Goal 6 Combat HIV AIDS, malaria and other diseases. Goal 7 Ensure environmental sustainability. Goal 8 Develop a global partnership for development. Goal 1 Achievements Briefly, we can discuss about goal 1 achievements here. Extreme poverty has declined significantly over the last two decades. In 1990, nearly half of the population in the developing world lived on less than $1.25 a day. That proportion dropped to 14% in 2015. Globally, the number of people living in extreme poverty has declined by more than half, falling from 1.9 billion in 1990 at 836 million in 2015. Most progress has occurred since 2000. The number of people in the working middle class living on more than $4 a day has almost tripled between 1991 and 2015. This group now makes up half the workforce in the developing regions, up from just 18% in 1991. The proportion of undernourished people in the developing regions has fallen by almost half since 1990, from 23 to 23.3% in 1990-1992 to 12.9% in 2014 and 2016. Goal 2. The primary school net enrollment rate in the development regions has reached 91% in 2015, up from 83% in 2000. The number of out-of-school children of primary school age worldwide has fallen by almost half to an estimated 57 million in 2015, down from 100 million in 2000. Sub-Saharan Africa has had the best record of improvement in primary education of any region since the MDGs were established. The region achieved a 20 percentage point increase in the net enrollment rate from 2000 to 2015 compared to a gain of 8 percentage points between 1990 and 2000. The literacy rate among youth aged 15 to 24 has increased globally from 83 percent to 91 percent between 1990 and 2015. The gap between women and men has narrowed. Goal 3. Promote gender equality and empower women. Many more girls are now in school compared to 15 years ago. The developing regions as a whole have achieved the target to eliminate gender disparity in primary, secondary and tertiary education. In Southern Asia, only 74 girls were 
enrolled in primary school for every 100 boys in 1990. Today, 103 girls are enrolled for every 100 boys. <laughs> Women now make up 41% of paid workers outside the agriculture sector, an increase from 35% in 1990. Between 1991 and 2015, the proportion of women in vulnerable employment as a share of total female employment has declined 13 percentage points. In contrast, vulnerable employment among men fell by 9 percentage points. Women have gained ground in parliamentary representation in nearly 90 percent of the 174 countries with data over the past 20 years. The average proportion of women in parliament has nearly doubled during the same period, yet still only 1 in 5 members are women. Goal 4. Reduce the child mortality. The global under 5 mortality rate has declined by more than half dropping from 90 to 43 deaths per 1000 live births between 1990 and 2015. Despite population growth in the developing regions, the number of deaths of children under 5 has declined from 12.7 million in 1990 to almost 6 million in 2015 globally. Since the early 1990s, the rate of reduction of under 5 mortality has more than tripled globally. In sub-Saharan Africa, the annual rate of reduction of under 5 mortality was over 5 times faster during 2005 to 2013 than it was during 1990 to 1995. Measles vaccination helped prevent nearly 15.6 million deaths between 2000 and 2013. The number of globally reported measles cases declined by 67% for the same period thanks to development of modern agriculture, modern medical facilities. About 84% of children worldwide received at least one dose of measles containing vaccine in 2013 up from 73 percent in 2000. Goal 5. Improve maternal health. Since 1990, the maternal mortality ratio has declined by 45 percent worldwide and most of the reduction has occurred since 2000. In Southern Asia, the maternal mortality ratio declined by 64 percent between 1990 and 2013 and in sub-Saharan Africa it fell by 49 percent. More than 71 percent of births were assisted by skilled health personnel globally in 2014, an increase from 59 percent in 1990. In Northern Africa, the proportion of pregnant women who received four or more antenatal visits increased from 50% to 89% between 1990 and 2014. Goal 6. Combat HIV AIDS, Malaria and other diseases. New HIV infections fell by approximately 40% between 2000 and 2013 from an estimated 3.5 million cases to 2.1 million. By June 2014, 13.6 million people living with HIV were receiving ART globally, an immense increase from just 800,000 in 2003, ART averted 7.6 million deaths from AIDS between 1995 and 2013. Over 6.2 million malaria deaths have been averted between 2000 and 2015, 
primarily of children under 5 years of age in sub-Saharan Africa. The global malaria incidence rate has fallen by an estimated 37 percent and the mortality rate by 58 percent. More than 90, 900 million insecticide treated mosquito nets were delivered to malaria endemic countries in sub-Saharan Africa between 2004 and 2014. Goal 7 Ensure environmental sustainability. Ozone depleting substances have been virtually eliminated since 1990 and the ozone layer is expected to recover by the middle of this century. Terrestrial and marine protected areas in many regions have increased substantially since 1990. In Latin America and the Caribbean, coverage of terrestrial protected areas rose from 8.8 percent to 23.4 percent between 1990 and 2014. Goal 8. Develop a global partnership for development. Official development assistance from developed countries increased by 66 percent in real terms between 2000 and 2014 reaching 135.2 billion dollar in 2014 Denmark, Luxembourg, Norway, Sweden and the United Kingdom continue to exceed the United Nations official development assistance target of 0.7 percent of gross national income. In 2014, 79 percent of uh, imports from developing to developed countries were admitted duty free up from 65 percent in 2000. The proportion of external debt service to export revenue in developing countries fell from 12 percent in 2000 to 3 percent in 2013. As of 2015, 95 percent of the world's population is covered by a mobile cellular signal thanks to Millennium Development Goals which yielded very good results and we cannot expect such development in the developing countries. Even then the Millennium Development Goals made it possible thanks to Millennium Development Goals. Thank you. Thank you.